What's up, compadres? <laughs> I hope you're watching. Oh, 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 oh. He's Eddie Preston. Gotcha. And Lance Man. Hey. We got Joe Rosati <laughs> in the house to party. Yeah. <laughs> and Davi Dot. Dumbs up low, my buddy. Oh, <laughs> Bars. I am the sun. Bars. Bars, bars, bars. Let's go, compadres. Mm. That's it. That's, That's it. it. That's, That's the one. Fire, bro. That's it. This sure is the master. Yeah, he's hey. the master. Ladies and gentlemen, we got the man, the myth, the legend, again, Mr. Davi Das in the house. Yes, part two. <laughs> <laughs> part two, part two. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. It, one of the most humbling individuals I've ever met in my life. For sure. Seriously. Thank you, thank you again. Oh, I, I can't you. thank you enough. Appreciate you being here again, man. This is gonna be man. fun. Yes, yes, yes. And he also brought his his wonderful mother in town too. Yeah, oh, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, visiting for two weeks from Germany. You know, so very nice. Showing her what it is that her son does allegedly. You know, <laughs> in America, she doesn't know that you're a mega star. Well, <laughs> I don't know what she thinks. But <laughs> <laughs> She's seen you perform though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. What, what does she say after the performances? Well, so does when I play, I play like a bunch of new songs and I'm playing a bunch of songs that I used to play in Lithuania. You know? So she, I recognize some of those songs. So she, no, she thought it was really cool, you know. Nice. And just how people respond, like after the show, like um, not the one you guys went to, but like the one I did in December in Huntington Beach. There was like, um, I told everyone, like, if they want to like shake hands and, mm -hmm. you know, take a picture with me, like form a line. And then, you know, she saw like people form a line and they <laughs> stand in line, take a picture of me and shake hands with me. So, you know, that was like a, like, mm -hmm. wow, you know, people travel. Crowd zombies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Follow my train. And well, well, you know, it's, I guess just the appreciation, you know. Like, Absolutely. I, I, right. I, you know, I don't have any kids, so I can't imagine. But, you know, if you like, have kids and then you see, like, uh, strangers admiring your kid's talent, you know, like, mm -hmm. must be, like, a mind-blowing experience. Yeah, I would it's got to be. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. And it's your mama's, yeah. So I get that. And yeah. thank, you be, thank you for being here. Yes, Absolutely. yes, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So. Be. Follow up first before I go ahead and dive deep. Go, go, ahead. <laughs> go and dive deep. Okay, Pete. ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go ahead and let this go right into our "Let It Fly" segment. Mm. I mean, that's also been a part of this before. Mm -hmm. You know, we got some interesting images this time around for you, and we're gonna see what you think about it. So, okay. you already know when you see it, let it fly. Yeah, yeah. All okay. right, so ladies we and gentlemen. do literally don't fly, but <laughs> you probably could though with all the talent you got. I mean, I ain't gonna get it twisted over here. Nah, he was floating yeah. on that stage. He was exactly. floating on that stage, bro. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, yeah, yeah! I did yeah. play that one. That's yeah. funny. That's Dude. funny. Ooh. Okay, Dude, Dude. Play that. And he does it off the cuff, you know. Yeah. Oh so, God! Three, two, one. And oh, what is this? Who is oh, that? Wow! That is uh, oh, Woodstock. Wow. That's and it That's burns. Original. It's like, I don't know, if, if you've seen the video of like Freebird or like Leonard Skinner, I don't know, for whatever reason, it's like the, it has the 70s vibe. I don't see any cell phones. <laughs> oh, no. So, so there's no cell phones. Oh, no. I don't know, like Freebird. It's probably Pager Days for sure. <laughs> Freebird! <laughs> that, that's what I'm... And, and it's like, it's not Jimmy, it's not Janice. It's like, I don't know who that is, but yeah. It's, mm -mm. Is that 66, 67? Something no, like it looks that? Like, no, it's 69. 69, yeah, there we go. 69. And see, the, the other one is 99 when it was an utter show because mm. that was when I look at that picture I look at this and peace love and happiness and dope and whatever and like people were there to mm -hmm. have fun in the times and music but this was all greed by the promotion of it right. I mean, if you ever watched the documentary Wow. It was horrible because yeah. they didn't have running water. They there was feces going through. Oh, where it was wow. just it, they, it, and then they burnt. There was a fire. Oh, yep. so basically, Coachella. That's what I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they we really, they really dropped the ball on it. And it's uh, you know when so I look at those two pictures, it sees where we've grown in time as a society, which is sadder than anything to me. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who were you gonna say? Larry? I was just say some of those European tours are crazy too, man. Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure, man. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, this just reminds me of uh, what Joe said. <laughs> All the craziness that happened. It was a different time. All the cover-ups they was doing. But a lot of great artists. I mean, it was the first of its kind. No, I mean, the the, the 99 one was crazy because that's when Kid Rock came out there and just... Mm -hmm. My name is Kid. Yeah, I, I know. I ain't that young. <laughs> when, he came, when he came out in that you know, fur coat and his top hat and his cane, I mean... There was a bunch of them were just getting down on. They had a lot of artists there, but they just the whole way they structured the concert was uh -huh. just ridiculous. And it was sad. They it took was. party like a rock star to the extreme. Right? <laughs> yeah, they did for <laughs> sure. For us. Yeah. All right, we're ready uh, for the next one. Next one. Let's go, Mastermind. Two, one. 
It's okay. Hey. No, no, no. At this point, it's Chris Pratt's voice. <laughs> oh. Mushroom Kingdom. Here we come. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Yeah you got it That's it oh, It's man. a different voice it's, yeah. it's no more of that little <laughs> no. <laughs> Here we go No no more of that No more Did any Has anyone Been able I, to see it No yet? I have not I've not Other seen it Other than myself I haven't, I haven't either Okay Is no, it out I, I, Yeah it's out. Okay. I went to the theater When I went back home With my parents To watch Air, which is a great film, but I was walking by and you just hear ding 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 ding. ding, ding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm not gonna go see this. Uh-huh. There's no way. All I can say is iconic, life, life, lifetime, nostalgic. I used to have to sneak into my uncle's room just to play this on Super Nintendo. Yeah, <laughs> man. So you know, I was <laughs> cool. I had my own Nintendo, but I wanted to get the right. graphics a little bit better. Super so Nintendo. So Super right. Nintendo <laughs> is what I had to sneak in his room for. So uh, uh, yeah, well, that's when Tales came out, and you mm-hmm. got to you know. He's like, you know, the godfather of games right here, for nice, sure. Nice, 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 nice. All right, all right, all right. Let's go. Three, two, one. Oh, <laughs> we like this. Man, this <laughs> just created a lot of uh, a lot of lives, you know, during the, the, the lockdowns and stuff like that. You know, a lot Chill? of people was Netflix oh, the, the, and chilling. Oh, I see. I'm like, you know, so a lot of what uh, is he like? I see. I a see. lot of uh, procreation was going on. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> For, <laughs> due to the this. population of sur- surplus. Yeah, <laughs> they should get a. You know, they should probably brand something with Trojan and you know, say, <laughs> say something. I'm just saying. You have an account, man. What you got? Um, t- I can't say that. <laughs> My mom's here. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it, it. You know, I'll, I'll do, I'll do. I'll remember uh, how it started. Right, uh, it was like ninety seven, ninety eight, I think. And remember, they used to send it by DVD. Yeah, then and, they, they mail. mailed. They mailed it. Mailed it. Yeah, and then you would, you know, get it mm-hmm. and then send it back. Right. right. And then, you mean oh seven oh eight. No, no, they were doing this in 90, 97? 97? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, because oh, yeah. I'm like, wow, the back, in, the back in the uh, Blockbuster days, too? Like 97, that? 98. It, okay. That's when Netflix started, for sure, 100%. And then they used to, uh, and then Gamefly came, like, 2001, that's 2002, right. remember? And then they would uh, they would uh, absolutely, uh, you know, push it into that that direction. So, And then now for them to have subscriptions, those yeah. were the original subscribers, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And then now it's turned into that. So now, you know. Netflix. Well, let's hold on because Mark put a book over here, so he wants to say something. So this is Mark Randolph. He is the first CEO of Netflix. He's there you the go. Founders. This is his book, but he has since moved on from the company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yep. So this is all about the all about Netflix and how it started. Show that to the camera, Joe. Ideas. Wow. Did he come up with the original Netflix and chill idea too? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> he should coin well, that. The business model got copied and, and repeated and repeated and repeated, and it's like now we understand what you know. Subscriptions and 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 you know like now everyone does streaming that. And, yeah. And, yeah yeah it's like, like a standard at it's this absolutely point. yeah man yeah. yeah competition running wild you got other streaming platforms and stuff that are trying to compete and so they split cool. I guess different type of movies and stuff like that so but, you cool. know, give so me back all the Fridays have you noticed <laughs> like you want to watch a movie and you go on Netflix and Netflix doesn't have the movie then you go on Amazon Amazon does not have the movie then you go on like Apple TV and like it's too many streaming <laughs> services and nobody has the movie you want to see yeah but they've done that they they did that back in the day with HBO and Showtime and, and Cinemax really? it was okay. the same thing like you couldn't get I mean you could find it on one and not the other mm-hmm. you know I mean it's all game so weird or just get a jailbroken fire stick there you go <laughs> I know people still got them things there you go uh, I know but <laughs> there's a will there's a way <laughs> you know, to me, with that, it's like you know when you park in the red, you're gonna get a ticket, and the other guy doesn't. It's like if I got one of them, those sticks, those boxes, I'd be the one that got caught. You know what I mean? That's yeah. why I never. Yeah, if you got out. caught, man, that's on you. You, <laughs> well, on you, guys, you, you guys, you being an actor and you being from from a family, with, I think you know royalties mean and, and you know copyright would mean a lot to you guys, right? It, it does. Well, that's why I have a. I, I don't want to get too yeah, deep about, this, about, the, about the, the con, about the contract else. with some of this the stuff that's on else. Netflix and what they pay out. It's a little disheartening, yeah. you know. It happened to me in November. We all talked about this off camera before, and I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. All right. You having fun, brother? Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sounds good, man. Oh, <laughs> this is. <laughs> who is hey, I, mean, I mean, look at the difference between left and right. Like, like who is that? Yeah, I didn't even get And then look at, look at here. <laughs> so I was gonna ask this, you, what was yes, this guy thinking man. right now at this point? Oh. What was he thinking? Oh God! I mean, I was just give us the scoop. Posing for mm-hmm. the picture. 
But I mean, no, well, well, they send out those later, you know, so, Got you. you know, so that comes like a few months after. So probably at that point was like 1.2 or something, you know, and I'm pretty sure what I did, I like took a Sharpie and I drew like an eye in the pyramid and then I just <laughs> tilted it over. So I defaced it permanently. And the previous one, it's like they give you one for 100,000. So I, with a Sharpie, I would cross over 100,000 and write 200,000 and cross over, you know, so yeah. it would be right. subsequent. Right. I saw that. So it's like, it's like, it's like defaced completely. I don't know. I don't believe in awards. I like the who who did it? Like when Pearl Jam accepted their Grammy, didn't he like like pick it up? He's like, I just want everyone to know this means nothing, and just walked out. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought that's badass, oh. you know, because it's like the physical thing itself. It's like it, it doesn't mean anything. Right. It's it's like that the work that you input to get it, and then the people who supported you along the way. That's what it means. So you know, I'm I don't know. I'm. Uh, maybe I'll I'll do like a giveaway of it. I'll just give it away to someone, you know, or like, or you know, give them both away, you know. Uh, Stay or, tuned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could be an idea. You that know, would, that's a great idea. Yeah, because there's like you know people that like, um, uh, like I played this red guitar at this like blues competition, and they asked me about this red guitar because I haven't been playing. So actually, yeah, I need to like give away some guitars and stuff, you know. So they, they, they'll be like items of memorabilia that in the large grand scheme of things, you know, don't like really mean anything. You know, if you put it up on sale on eBay, it's going to be less than its actual new uh, comparable item, you know, because I owned it. But for some other people, they they, mm-hmm. they would love to have it, you know. Absolutely. Like, like you saw at the show, like somebody drove like, what, six, seven yes. hours? Oh, yeah, yeah, just yeah, to yeah. come like, see you play. Yeah, yeah. Some, just, yeah. Just, well, I believe it was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Like he, he had an auction house and all the perceives went to one of his charities. I mean, he was... All kinds of memorabilia, yeah. which I thought was cool. You know, I mean, he got rid of and he kept a couple items, but he had so many and he got rid of all kinds of stuff, which. Yeah. And for a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of items, the best items you get are the ones that have sentiment with them. Truth. So, you know, it just it'll mean a lot yeah, for like a lot of the, your fans. You have like a lot that, of fans too, to man, have a, I, have a piece of you that you've like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. man. Guitar Not in a weird way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the the picture on the left that's in Memphis. That's in um, 2016, maybe early 2017, January, uh, and then yeah, that was the I before I even had anything on YouTube. I was you know just playing with a with a blues band, and I had a I had a you know drummer, bass player, and a saxophone player, and we we played blues songs that I wrote, and and we tried to like make it in the blues music industry, which does not exist you know there's, right. there's the, the blues music yeah. industry like no there's you know who, who's there you know <laughs> <laughs> and then i think that's around the time i i got the idea i should probably like seek alternative routes of like uh unconventional success or something that because the, the old model was not working and we we might have touched a little bit about it last time you know how like mm-hmm. the you, you get a record deal you release a cd <laughs> you shoot him it's like no it's dead <laughs> it's, it's, it's been dead that's a big clip mm-hmm. for us yeah, 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 yeah. so <laughs> So, and, and, you know, so between this and that, there's been like, you know, so many like transformational changes, not physically, but just like thinking wise. And now, you know, since living in Los Angeles since October, there's been like my shifts in my own thinking of what I thought LA is and what it actually is and what it actually means to like, to try to do it. I don't know. Probably your experience has been the same. Like everyone's a hustler. Yes. It's, it, it's, yes. a, it's not necessarily that they're more ways than one. I, I, I know yeah. not, not necessarily that they're running a hustle on you, but they're like, hey, they, they try. <laughs> right. There's I'm not, not going to get too <laughs> deep. In, we'll, we'll get deep into this later with you about that. But no, mm-hmm. let's, let's call it what it is. I mean, well, everyone's you, trying to hustle someone. You got to hustle. I mean, East, you know, East Coast is like that too, but you got to hustle and bustle, man. Right. And I think sometimes out here, in all the business that we're in, sometimes you got to call everybody on their bluff. Yeah, that's big. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't know who's real and who isn't. Separating the mm-hmm. two. I mean, I've heard stories. I mean, the chef told told one last time he was on here yeah. and I just think you have to just call him on the bluff or just have your intuition know where you're at with it you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah yeah so. cause they're like oh I'm, I'm a private photographer for Beyonce yeah. right. <laughs> sure you are yeah. sure. oh I, I produced with uh, Jay Z or like really, really you know like, where, where's show the, the credentials <laughs> show me a picture <laughs> a pi- you know well, like, that I can't find on Google <laughs> no right. you know it's like and, and then yeah, yeah so yeah. and then yeah. selling dreams yeah, dude, it's it's really interesting, you know. So and and the whole idea of the, you know coming to Hollywood and you know making connections and then running into somebody and then you know maybe like a producer is gonna notice, notice your talent and then you're gonna record. Okay, you're gonna like record. Who's gonna listen to it? Do you have an audience? <laughs> you know, so there's like so many steps in the ladder that are missing. You know, so it's like 
there's like no concept and people don't understand. And now I'm like slowly learning that. And, you know, I've, I've had an uh, encounter with uh, someone who, you know, had like a delusional ideas of how success is attained or achieved by climbing over the people's heads, you know, and, mm -hmm. and then, you know, disregarding them as human beings, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, I, I have a theory. So I think like the, the, the largest predictor of long-term success, regardless of any industry, is ability to form and maintain genuine relationships with people. Yeah. I think, I think yes. that. Yeah, true. Whether it's restaurant, whether it's comedy, whether it's music, whether it's acting. If it's yes. personal, everything. Like, yes, like to this day, like, oh, this actor was nice to like the makeup artist. They were nice to the wardrobe people and they were like so much fun to work with. And who gets called back? That's who that, gets called back, absolutely. you know, that's, that's who's in your mind. Cause they were like, you know, nice to like everyone as opposed to like, right. what do you do? Oh, you're useless to me. And they're like, yeah. you know, yeah. like, yeah. And I, and I definitely want to give you your flowers on that. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, we had the pleasure of, you know, witnessing this master at work. And, but before he even took the stage, I saw him and well, I can say we saw him individually speak with everyone yeah, that was did. in there. Yeah. yeah they everyone did. got a moment with this guy. So like, Dude, when we talk about having like real relationships with your fans, that's what it's all about. And I commend that, bro. Thank I commend you. that big yeah. time. Uh, I had a guy come to my show last week and he's a woodworker. So he makes things out of wood. He made a full size Viking shield with my logo. <laughs> it's real. It's real. And he made an axe too to accompany <laughs> it. And so I just hung it in my bedroom. So not only like sometimes like you, you do get like uh, charged up. Because of a social interaction, people shake hands and they take right, pictures. Like right. they touch you and they're like, "Oh, this means so much." And then to wake up and see it physically, you know, because you know what it takes to like sand yeah. it, mm. cut it, measure it, <clears> think <throat> about it. You know, like treat the wood. Because I know, well, I don't know how to make a guitar, but I know a little bit about it. So like to see it every day, it's like a reminder. It's like not only there's a metaphorical warmth and love and appreciation and dedication, but here's this like so physical true. representation of like someone dedicating. Dude, how many hours would it take, you know? And then, and then to, to put that love in in, in, in wood, and wood is like a, a like an organic material that Absolutely. has lived, you know. So it like I don't know absorbs whatever, you know. So it's, <laughs> it, you know, and the fact that it's a shield, not a sword, you know. So it's like mm -hmm. a sort of like a Captain America type of like <laughs> ideal, you know, like you know, not a gun, but sort of like you mm -hmm. know, to 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 I don't know, to shield. I don't. It's just so many symbolism. So yeah. So I'm just really thankful. And it got your logo in it, right? Yeah, That's yeah. Right. It's like on, on, inspiration. On it. mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's really, really cool. Yeah. I got a good segue for that, man. So when you hit a big milestone, or you know, somebody recognizes you that you've looked up to your whole life or whatnot. Who is the first person that you contact or call or like you want to, you know, tell them, hey, this is this is this. This is what just happened to me. Who's the first person? What's really weird. So it would be family, but my family does not have a concept of who these people are that I've, you know, looked up to. So they're like in the industry, like big names. Right. But they're like big in the industry of guitar or music or mm -hmm. or like within the America and my family does not live in America right. so they you know, I could say it's so and so and they right. would not know you know and then you know I've been with people uh in partnerships you know and sometimes you want to share that but for what one reason or another it just kind of like drops off so you just like left to to like relish it on your own and by yourself which is really really like strange and, and you know and interesting like I ran into, uh, I don't know if you know, Michelangelo Badio. So he's like a legend from the 80s, you mm -hmm. know, of like shred guitar. And he's like the first and only in the world, you know, to play like a double neck like that guitar and like quadruple neck guitar and like make it spin. Like he was a, And yeah, he's spin. been there with everyone, with Steve I and Joe Satriani. And like, and I'm, he was playing at the Viper Room and my, a buddy of mine, Max, took me to see him. And we go backstage to meet Michelangelo Badio. And it's like... Oh, I, I've seen your videos. Yeah, you, you're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's this legend from the '80s, right? Uh -huh. Who's been with everyone and played on like you know the, the most iconic records that you know. It's like, yeah, he's seen me on YouTube. You know, we took a picture, and it's like, yeah, I have his phone number. You know, it's like that's cool, man. Like, that's awesome. You know, yeah, yeah. man. I, well, then it's gonna segue into my question. To go on top of that, if you had to pick a live and also no longer with us a group that you would love to remaster a song with, who would it be? And uh, what song would it be? It's a Freddie, uh, probably Freddie Mercury. It's not, so you see, uh, 
Mm-hmm. So I'm a fan of Freddie Mercury, not Queen. So Queen is like, yeah, I get that. <laughs> give him, get, break I it get down right, for him. Right. So Freddie, and I don't know, vocalist. Probably like I would, I would like to do like a duet, like with him of Under Pressure, you know, or something. <laughs> that would yeah. be so cool. <laughs> so dope. Or like you know, dido dido de, you know, <laughs> yeah. and just like just just go. Or like uh, I want to break free and like do a music video of just like and then like but like modernize it or something. Yeah, something like something crazy, you know, something. Or maybe well, you know, if they're like living, I'm sure they would have new ideas. So maybe yeah. it would be like a song that we can't even like picture. Right. Yeah, can't you know, be. maybe like you know down the road an AI will like imagine what <laughs> Freddie would have done if Freddie was alive today. They got the and, voice already. Yeah, you know. So. You know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. it's definitely taking over right <laughs> and what you got for him joe um so let's talk about your growth going on right now i know we got a lot of things going on oh my so god let's it's talk like- let's go ahead and talk about that and what i found a- a- ironic about this is <laughs> we're you know talking a little bit downstairs before we're coming on here and mm-hmm. you talked about someone made a shield and you put it over your bedroom i think that's a great idea yeah, I, I think it's a perfect place for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sounds like your 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 version of Don't a dream catcher. Don't get it catcher. twisted. I'll throw no, that no. at you real quick. No, I know, I know. Let's tell us about your dream catcher. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a shield in my bedroom. God damn it! That's yeah, the that place Ricky. that needs yeah. protection the most. Oh my god! Yes, come man. on, man. Give it up to the big man. Yeah. Come on now. Yes. That's hilarious. Yeah. Dude. yeah. So uh, let's talk so, about that going on because I know you're going on tour and you got some things going on. And well, mm-hmm. I, I think like I, I think like like even the long term relationship I had that was you know like nine years and right. I had to sort of like escape from it did not give me that much of a PTSD as as this one yeah. you know and it's it's really weird because you you know you think like a long-term one but maybe the conclusion and the completion and the fact that you know even before you exit that it's it's over there's like no chance of it right. you know gives you that sort of like closure closure and the sense of resolution mm-hmm. to where it's like well there's no answers to seek because all the questions have been answered. Right. And then like a short term thing that's like three months and then it like hits you like a freight train. Then you need stitches. Then you go to ER, metaphorically yeah. speaking. <laughs> then yes. they can't admit you. Then you just are like left bleed out. And then the emergency <laughs> contact was the person who ran you over oh, with the train. Right. And you like, oh my God, that was my emergency contact who I would talk to. and. They block me on everything, you know? So it's like, then it sends you in the tailspin and then you start listening to grunge and Pearl Jam and Nirvana (laughs) and then you get your nails painted. And now it's like, oh, now I understand the songs. (laughs) Oh yes. Keep it going, brother. Man, man, man. Well, I always say, you told him to take the shield down and that's what I was protecting. (laughs) Those are the best guys. Gosh, gosh. Now, now, elaborate to the guests at home. How long was this last relationship? Well, I don't want to get into details because then it would make it traceable online. Right. Absolutely. So what I want to talk about, my own subjective emotional experience and what right. can be learned from it mm-hmm. uh, and in taken away and not, not to use, you know, so like not to do, you know, like don't do this and don't do that, you know. So uh, perhaps um, you shouldn't like propose to someone you've only met a handful of times and uh and you should like you know get to know a person like like really because sometimes i don't know it's like you know how like women sometimes will will post uh their entire social media presence will flaunt sort of like promiscuity and then they will be disappointed how come they attract a certain type of guy you know, based on, let's call it PR Mm -hmm. choices of what to post. So the same with men, you know, men will like choose to post something. And it's probably most likely on me because of my lack of experience and then trusting and believing at face value, you know, it's like, hi, I'm I'm an alien from a different planet. Oh, really cool. What planet you come from? (laughs) And I just like, this is so cool. I've never met an alien before. (laughs) Tell me more about it. You know, sort of like zero concept that, you know, there are people whether consciously or unconsciously, they have their own best self interest in mind, not yours. And then they will use social tools acquired throughout the years of their social existence on this planet to, 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 and still I'm like making defenses in my head by wanting to say inadvertently, but perhaps deliberately to, you know, to take advantage of you and use you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And it's, 
Whew. And it's like the closer you are to it, like you don't have the perspective, you know, like the further away. Now you can. See I could the see the whole thing yeah. when, when you're like nose closed. You you that, no, and you know. You know, I, I think sometimes we have blinders on, and then the people around you see what's going on and tell you, and you know, in your ego, your pride. Oh, I'm going to make this work, and oh, of course, you know, and I and I think that's the when you have a good support system around, I think they can help you through things like that. Yeah, you know, but I, I want to tell you one thing: if as long as you can realize this, I had a friend, a very good friend, tell me this years ago. Mm-hmm. If you never try to figure out women, you'll be fine. <laughs> and as long as you know they're all related, you'll even be better. So just put that in your bank. Put that in the back of your head. Because I'm telling you what, I, we've all been through it. There's not one person married in here, so no one's figured it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just uh, keep on moving forward, I guess. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, so that, That's good. I like and that, Jeff. There's yeah. certain yeah. situations where people have significant others, but they're still looking yeah. for another. It's, uh, and so. with social media the way it is and everything else now, I mean, it, it, relationships get screwed up all the time you know the, the the people i know that have strong marriages and relationships they don't have social media accounts smart There's no you know so but uh, i know you're going on that's tour so point. you want to go ahead and talk about that because yeah. i know that's going to clear your head and go into a yeah yeah i'm uh i'll go like in like two weeks for like a month and a half maybe two months you know there's like no plan right now so i'll just pack my stuff in the car and just like wow just head uh I was going to say west, but we're as far west as far. <laughs> we <are. laughs> Ten years in Florida. So, you know, where do you go? You yeah. go west. So now I'm going to go east. Uh, and you do this all on your own. You don't have a booking agent or anything, no, no, no. Though, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, look, look, look. Let me say this, too. He just posted something on YouTube, uh, and you guys will see this next week, but it's already got over 100 comments of people telling you where you want they want you to come. So mm-hmm. uh, you kind of are going to build some type of idea out of that, right? A yeah. little bit, yeah, because... Also, like you know, self report reporting is never accurate because uh, this this number of people see the post. Only this percentage of people respond to the post, and only this percentage that respond to the post e- would actually even show up. You know, mm. so so you, you try, I try not to draw statistics from those responses. You know, Ooh, I see how that. Yeah, works. it's like it's like a funnel. You know, so right. it's like pay a, attention. Easier yeah, yeah. Way to map it out. Hey. Yeah. So I, I I know I have an event mid June in Indiana in Fort Wayne Indiana and it's like a week long event so I I have like a month and a half to get to Indiana and I can <laughs> I go I, I can so I can go different ways. yeah 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 so you know I can go through through like that or like you know through Texas and then through Nashville or like you know straight shot through like uh, Colorado or something I don't know and the, I did the same thing last year I went on the road for like two and a half months ten thousand miles all by myself zero plan ended up doing like twelve shows unplanned always had someone film it. You know, like, uh, and booked something last minute, would show up in the bar in Nashville. There's like a band playing, and they're like doing a double take at me. And then after they're said, hey, can we take a picture with you? <laughs> <laughs> of then, course. And then we take a picture, and then they connect me with a guy who books shows. And three days later, I'm playing there. And then, you know, so it's like, and then. So everything happens just with you organically, it sounds like, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's That's like crazy. his shreds, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, but what I'm saying, he's got no one booking him. He just goes and where he wants to go. Stuck. And that's it. Yeah. That's crazy. So I could keep doing that. But I, th- I think like there's gonna be like a threshold and that I'm uh, even feeling right now that it's only me handling everything. So I, I am looking for like uh, to hire like a full-time assistant, right? you know, to like to, to delegate or like hire other people and, and, and sort of not necessarily like a, like a Ford Model T assembly line belt, but when, when you're just by yourself, like, you look at all the people that you know you admire or <laughs> or the, the that wrote the books on the shelf that you have in your apartment nobody did it on their own yes. right facts. you know that's straight up facts so so almost i'm like reaching the point where it's like i have like 50 to 100 things to do a day i can only get to two or three efficiently and then the rest are suffering and the next thing you know it's like and you know and then you know obviously bad choices when it comes to uh relationship <laughs> which is the common de- denominator is me so i want to preface that even if you're dating the devil there's something wrong with you yeah. <laughs> you know there's, there's yeah. something so it's definitely something that tells something about my character to make you know such a like <laughs> miscalculated oh, no, choice just, uh, and be like okay with it for like so long so it's like you know there's like there's work and growth <laughs> for me to do because you know you, you can't like think on on behalf of the other person. Right. I saw an interesting quote on Instagram today. Um, someone treating you like you don't matter is all the closure you need. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I guess that goes with my closure. And I wanted Seriously. to say too. Um, wow. Seriously. Where where can they apply for uh, the so, position you're 
So Offering. the 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 every video description has my email. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like just just send me an email, you know, and then yeah, because that's like I wrote out. <laughs> I took a. I went to Mel's diner yesterday with my mom. Shocker! Oh. Shocker! <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we're not going there tonight. <laughs> I mean, we can go. Oh, no, I'm we, there every day. I think we're every day do some you go. Taste the Caribbean. Well, yeah. <laughs> let's let's just say that the 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 NDA and the, what I had to cover that I probably spend that much at Mel's a month. You know. <laughs> 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 oh, he's he's dropping gems today. He is. For real? <laughs> Does mom like Mel's? Does mom yeah. like Mel's? Yeah. 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 yeah, she she like yeah. Mel's. Yeah. yeah. No, I wrote like a thing and like a like a you know. Uh, you, okay, okay, take it in. Take it. In. Okay, it's, it's awesome, man. If you guys are serious mm. about this and serious about your craft, go ahead and hit them in the email. <laughs> Come correct or don't come at all. Absolutely. Seriously. Yeah. But yeah, continue, brother. <laughs> continue. No, I just I just drew out like a like a like a like a model, like a like a not necessarily like a business model because it makes no sense. And by any means of a stretch of a imagination of a traditional sense of a it would not apply by by it would not apply to any any stereotype of a musician or a performer. It almost like I, I don't need like an agent or a manager or a booking person or a or a promoter or a, or a touring aid or anything like that i can literally play at denny's for two people but with like one videographer that's gonna like you know uh do really well online for whatever Mm -hmm. reason Mm -hmm. so you know to find somebody to like oh there's a place uh, that serves avocado toast sandwiches in Los Angeles, by the way, and they're having a grand opening. And you know, and then to pair it up and show up at like an avocado toast grand opening cafe, right? And it's not burnt. And play and play for the it's line of people. Burnt. Okay, that's not burnt, right? And like play a song and sing like burnt avocado, <laughs> right? right? And then post that online, just like do stuff like that, you know. And then do like a shredding guitar solo, right. you know. And then there's gonna be one person in line that drove five hours from San Francisco to see me play live, and then it's just. <laughs> just like out of the box stuff, you yeah. know, and just like create things like that. Cause like, oh, you could, you could book the peppermint club. You could be, book the hotel cafe. And it's like everything that I've ever tried traditional, it did not work for me. So it's like, hmm, I'll just do like non-traditional. What about this? Like a uh, playing in like a, uh, in a state and uh, where people are just now getting vaccinated and play for that line or something or, or like, and then, you know, in, I don't know, like coming, improvising songs about like being healthier. I don't know, just like, just like, just, just exactly, you know, like. <laughs> His mind is flung. Yeah. You are creating on camera with mm-hmm. us right now. This is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so you, away. Yeah. Not just like an assistant, but like a brainstorm idea, right. you know? And then, you know, not only they would have to be like, um, you know, like not, not remote, but they would have to understand the range of my sense of humor. Mm-hmm. And then sort of like to grasp the idea of the personality of what I'm willing to do. Right. You know, because I'm, you know, willing to do some funny stuff, you know, and I've done funny stuff, you know. So, yeah. yeah. And then that would take the 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 channel to where it is now. Because, like, you know, you show the picture and that's like a gold plaque, one million. So that's just me. So what if you have, you when you're running a, a, a ship, you know, and I don't know anything about sailing, but I'm sure there are terms, you know. So there's a guy who does this, and then you have to do that, and then you have to do, and then, and then there's a guy who does that, right? And, so, and, so, and then, and then, if there's pirates, you have people manning the cannons, right? Right. True. So one true. guy puts yeah. the ball on the thing, and then the other guy like. <laughs> so imagine the effectiveness of that. Tape. Absolutely, I get it. I had a little I, playoff because he looked like J- uh, Jason Momoa. In that one no. picture, oh right? God, with mustache, like, yeah, yeah. all day. So I'm gonna fire you up after you said all that because I like to fire people up. Uh, do what you? do you got? Yeah, I do. Hell yeah. What do you got to say to people that say rock and roll and blues is dead? Well, I think what they mean is the clothes of the genre and the style and the slang and the walk is out of fashion, right. rightly so. But the attitude and the spirit of uh dun, 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 you yep. know mm-hmm. that is quite well it's just dressed differently it sounds a little bit differently and 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 people and generations change so 1950s let's look at 1950s blues and blues artists right. chicago muddy waters little walter howling wolf right b- bespoke suits custom made for them 
newest Cadillacs, three, four women in the studio. Everyone's a badass with like gold rings, right? Yeah. What does that remind you of? It's literally hip hop today. <laughs> today. Chains. And then and singing on the boat and, and all, the, all the names. Muddy Waters is not a real name. That's uh, McKinley Morganfield. That was his real name. Howling Wolf is not a real name. The same with like Lil Uzi or Two Chains or 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 uh, the 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 Migos Offset and and Take Off. Yeah. No, you know. So it's like that exists. It's just you don't rec- people who say that blues and rock and roll is dead. They just it exists. You saw it. You just didn't recognize it. Absolutely. Ooh. I mean, Ooh. I'll say I'll say uh, the biggest uh, all the biggest songs you guys all hear, especially in hip hop, all comes from James Brown. So oh, I, mm. oh, yeah. I mean, all yeah. the covers from him, from his start of right. his career till <clears throat> now, these are all recycled beats. And from the 60s and 70s. I mean, this is what people are doing now still. Mm-hmm. So, And I mean, before that, <laughs> his drummer is jazz trained. There you go. So then he copied like Buddy Rich and then yeah. everyone before from like the big band jazz of like, you know, like, yes. uh, like, uh, like, uh, um, what's that? I don't know in English. doesn't matter. You know, so it's like, it like, it's all traceable back and then it's like, changes depending on the ethos and the cultural zeitgeist of the era you know and and this gonna same kind of same is gonna happen with hip-hop it's gonna become too mainstream and as soon as you see like a like a van commercial for a family of four and the background music for that car commercial is going to be hip hop. You know, it's like starting to implode because now it's marketing yeah. to like, mm-hmm. you know, it's no longer it's no longer <laughs> like against you, status yeah, quo. Yeah, it's smooth. no longer rebellion. And yes, as, as long as, as as long as it's so big that it's no longer the rebellion, then the rebellion will have to be new. So I have a prediction. I could be wrong, but I think Zeitgeist travels in thirty year cycles, and like ten years ago. 80s was like peak nostalgia in all media from like Stranger Things to Ghostbusters mm-hmm. getting a remake to even the Weekends album sounding like it's straight from the 80s. I'm predicting a uh, punk pop 90s Nirvana grunge but with like a different beat and mm-hmm. that's going to be like the new wave. Mm, even can you can even see it in Levi's jeans what they're right. selling what's their newest collection it's like literally call, everything's a callback to 90s you know the Vans shoes it's like yep. it's like that for the new generation that's like like a nostalgic but it's not accurate representation it's not an accurate repeat because unlike in the 90s when they had nostalgia for the 60s right um, now we have internet so all of time exists all at once. So that, that gets reiterated and reimagined. Mm-hmm. It's how you go to a 50s theme cafe and they have those like quarter things like, and it's like, well, in the 50s, they didn't have, they had them in one spot. They didn't have them at every table. And actually the chairs would not be like that. And so it's like what they think it should have been like or what they think because they didn't live it, you know? So it's like, it gets like reiterated, regurgitated and redigested and then repackaged and represented, you know? Well, Pete, like, because you're such a shoe head, I mean, when the Jordan started doing all the retros, what, how many years ago that start? 1984. No, no, when did they start with the, when they came out? Like oh, when they started re retro and stuff? Yeah. Early, no, I'm sorry, late 90s. So yeah. we're talking like And now, now it's every other month there's a new one coming out. I mean, it's pretty, you know, crazy. Yeah, it's crazy how a lot of people are, you know, fighting over stuff that I'm just getting... Okay. But we ain't gonna go there. What's the cycle? And you still can't find a thirteen. Thanks. No, no, sorry. <laughs> yeah, appreciate you. Buddy. Finding a thirteen is <laughs> no. Man. You don't need to tell me. Everything is reinvented. Yeah, and everything I mean, is we've reinvented. We've seen it in, in the history of time. Yeah. So speaking on that, a history of time, man. Uh, you know, what do you think about the uh, the growth of, of of America and where we came so far, and you coming to this country and what you've seen so far, mm-hmm. and the the different parts of things that are going on and, and, and your experiences. Mm-hmm. Cause you traveled a lot of places. Absolutely, places, so you got a man. Your mom's here. A lot of different culture you know, shocks and yeah, stuff man. in America. Yeah. Uh, so what I, I think one person's brain cannot objectively digest the, the, the sheer magnitude and the cultural shifts and changes within even one generation. So like I, I can, I can talk to you about it from a very limited subjective 
point of view that I'm sitting from, and mine is not even like comparable sometimes to some other people, you know, because I don't know, for like a, a number of reasons, because I'm from Lithuania and because I came here when I was 19 and I didn't know nobody, you know. So uh, it seems at, at least the way it was presented in, 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 in media and art and songs and music, uh, almost I try not to put blame on the misrepresentation because when people do create art, and if they want the art to be successful, it has to be like, you know, maybe p positive or optimistic. So, of course, it's going to be like highlighted, you know, the good parts or like what's funny and the and the relationships, you know, w with people. Then if you look at the news today, it's like, oh, my God, this is awful. But then yeah. you travel the country in the in the in the car that everyone says, well, you should not travel the country in the car. <laughs> and everything's fine. It's so <laughs> weird. You know, it's like, oh my God, I should have gotten, well, wait, I almost did get shot in St. Louis. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So oh, that, oh, oh, no, oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tell him, my bad. Right. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely no, blend no, that no, out. No, yes. no, I'm writing a song. I'm, I, I want to write an ironic song. <laughs> it's like, um, I pull up gently in my gold Mercedes. Your girlfriend told me she wants to have my babies. Oh. You know, oh, something like that. Bars. You know? It's just <laughs> bars. 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 Uh, bars. <laughs> when, when police stop That's me, they only ask for selfies. You know? Oh, just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a situation. That's I had a smart. cop in Kentucky. Woo! Of course. <laughs> and then he's like, hey, man, I, I'm on my way to a call. I just want to say, I watch your videos. Can I get a picture? <laughs> Literally, a cop pulled me over oh, and man. asked for a selfie because he saw the car, you know? Yeah. Living legend, ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> yeah, and legend. So continue though, man. What were you saying though? Here at America and coming here and, and what you've seen so far. If almost if you like try to like objectively to comprehend and describe the people and the culture and try to like come up with some sort of like explanation for what's going on in the graph, it, 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 people don't operate like that. People are not logical. People don't think in graphs, in statistical probabilities and percentages of the likelihoods of this happening or not happening or positive outcomes or negative outcomes. They're highly emotional individuals, and especially me as a musician, maybe I'm like in tune with that emotionality and performing it in front of people and not having a set list and trying to figure out what's, what's gonna be the next song that I'm gonna play. So I have to like almost guess based on face, body language and lack of interest or like, you know, are they paying attention? So when I meet people, maybe I'm just reading their energy and, and I'm able to crack a joke and make them smile and open up. And then every encounter I've ever had has nothing to do with like me being online or them recognizing me. How plenty of times did not get recognized, still got a free room upgrade, didn't even ask for it, got an extension for free, didn't ask for it. Somebody like, uh, we'll do this and that for you. And they like went out of the way because they, they were, you know, so if you're just like friendly and open and kind hearted and honest and you're genuine, it just triggers those emotions in the hearts of people that you meet and then you resonate within the key of kind and positive and 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 empathetic and and you just connect with people like that and i've seen it over and over and over again i was and you know the first city was scary the second city and then it's like by the 10th 15th city i went to it's like already they're different places the people are going to be different but they're the same around the world. Like every person is made from the same clay. Absolutely. So they're gonna respond to heat and they're gonna respond to cold by shrinking and cracking, you know, and to heat, you know, they're gonna like become more pliable, softer, softer material. Then you can like, you know, shape it into, you know, something, you know? What a, wow. Yeah, metaphor, metaphor, seriously, metaphor. Seriously. I want to lead into the next one. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. So, if you were able to design your entire show and the imagery and everything to represent you to your fans, what would you design it as? Oh, definitely a band. So right now I'm just doing a one man band. So I'm like live looping and I have to like pay attention to all these like different elements because, um, well, it's much easier to travel and create music and tour that way as opposed to like two, with two or three other people. Cause then the sheer logistics and coordinating the schedules and rehearsals and meals and hotels. And then they have their own lives and their own ideas of what it, I, you know, so, but at this point it would definitely have to be a band because, you know, I don't want to be attached to like my equipment, you know, with like a cable to the headphones. And, and, uh, so, Hmm. What's, what's a good example? What's I'm thinking of like a DVD of a concert, you know, 
um, you know what I've seen? So there's like a whole movement. Uh, they do um, uh, visuals. So there are like visual artists that will project visuals in concerts and based on how it's synchronized with music. And then they have their own like, just like an audio gear world, you have plugins and racks of effects. They have effects just for video and projection. So I've done a few shows with that and it was quite epic because there was literally a person paying attention, no rehearsal, but enough in real time was like changing visuals and you know putting my name or like logo on it or like right. you know making stuff move you know so that that sort of like creates a really interesting experience so in addition to music and sound because i immediately started thinking okay a bass player a drummer it's like yes but the experience so it, it would have to be an experience and experience is more than just what you hear it's what you see and then you know creatively planted like you know smoke machines and then like lasers from 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 the top it almost cr creates that larger than life experience you know because how yeah. often how often are you blinded by the light without yeah. the danger of burning your retina by the sunlight <laughs> <laughs> that alone triggers something in the brain right. something primal something because because we're evolved to respond to light yeah. how come like the heart rate you're just standing right but the bass hits and right, the floor vibrates and your heart goes up. You are evolved to recognize that. That why do we respond to 120 BPM so well? Well, because for nine months you were in the womb. Mm -hmm. So whatever speed the that beats, that's the injection of the hormones, whatever the mother is experiencing, stress, cortisol, dopamine, oxytocin, you're gonna feel that too. So it's almost, it's tied to the tempo of the rhythm, the motion that you're just like, oh, it's slow, so it's sad. No, the reason you know that, because you spend nine months in a closed space and you knew what it's gonna feel like if she's sad, you know, or if she's like, tum, 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 you know, you know, so, so that and with light, you know, because, I don't know, yeah, sound and light, yeah, that's as far as I got. Are you familiar with Dimash? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, the singer. You remember? Yeah, the singer. Uh, you remember his uh, during our the the co the COVID times. Uh, mm -hmm. He he did a virtual concert, and uh -huh. it was kind of you know the visuals were responding behind him, and you know you know yeah. he sounds like an angel. So you mm -hmm. know, and he had the wings pop out, that's and it was cool. a whole virtual kind. Yeah, so yeah. That, I, that's what I see for. For a set like for you for sure, mm -hmm. especially some bands, a band behind man. Oof. Yeah, it almost like to to make people interested in like a, a singer with a guitar, it would have to transcend its own stereotype of what it has been or the way people understand it, based on how people consume media and how they live and where they live. And I don't mean like the actual location, but they, but if they spend a lot of time on the internet, on the apps, on augmented reality, virtual reality, it would have to somehow almost like be integrated into that world and 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 made closer not necessarily with like Fortnite, right. you know uh, <laughs> right. uh special events Toon. like you know marshmallow did <laughs> but uh <laughs> you know nfts yeah you know, or not yeah not necessarily <laughs> that but yeah in in the right in the right direction right sort of like yeah i have not thought of that but you know i don't know I'll, I'll, yeah i'm sure i'll you know Good way to make him pick his brain. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, He's on fire, though. So do <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely on fire. Okay, so since you're on fire so much, <laughs> this is the positive moment of the podcast. You know, we're going to leave the compadres at home with some positivity. Uh -huh. Can I do something first? Oh, sure, sure. Do something first. I'm, I'm left field Lance is going to left field. Well, you do your thing, bro. You ain't okay. making mm -hmm. me mad shit. I know. It's all cool. fun and games. So <clears throat> I really want to get this take from you guys. I know it's different, but... Uh, would you ever, and I know your mom's here, but would you ever consider dating an adult film star or uh, uh, somebody that's in the adult film world? Um, <laughs> hold on. So I'm. So what I'm, oh, I'm oh, picturing oh. is all the uh, all the all the um, all the adult film stars that I'm familiar with, and I'm picturing <laughs> that in a date scenario. Exactly. And uh, this is foreign to me, so. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, whatever he says, I'm not gonna know. So, I'm not gonna so okay, <laughs> it is funny. This is some good. <laughs> I'm gonna Google. Okay, Google later. Um, <laughs> it's almost. This is good. <laughs> no. Sorry. 
glance. <laughs> killed me. I, so I'm like, when I'm in the relationship, I'm monogamous. Right. You know, so I would expect the same from the partner. Right. That's why it wouldn't work. Right. Get that. Yeah. There you go. There you go. That's yeah. straight up. I think mm-hmm. that's why it would not work. It would straight up. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. then, you know, that's the partnership. At, for, everyone has different ideas. That's fine. You're polyamorous. Yeah. Good for you. You know, right. you want to love, love a lot of people. That, that's fine. For me, it's like I am yours and then and no one else's. And then you are mine and no one else's, you yeah. know. So I, I can't see how that would work. Right. I yeah. have a saying to go with that. Uh-huh. If it's for everybody, it's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> well like, said. Just saying, man. Mm, it's the truth I live by. I could never do it. Oh, uh, we already talked about this uh, before. Uh, no, I don't right. think I could. I, I have I a friend. I have a friend <laughs> right. mm-hmm. that is. Yeah. And yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah. Speak on it, it. It's a special person that has to deal with that. Yeah. I could never do it. And I meet him quite often, unfortunately. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and uh, there's one I've talked to a few times, and she's nice and sweet, but it's just, I mean. I don't. I, it's always horror stories, man. Every yeah, time I, I mean, hear from I don't, them, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And it, just the optics of it, just like you said, yeah. man. I mean, it, it, you do your thing. That's it's fine. Almost, you, do, you don't even have to go as far as like a hypothetical adult film star. What if a person is just polyamorous and they just don't take video of that? But that's that's yeah, their that's thing. The point, yeah. You know, so I've seen examples of marriages getting ruined. Yeah, I've known friends who were in a polyamorous marriage. Like, yes, sure, it's a ticking time bomb, you know, and then it, and then it's just like you know, um, then you know what what's what is the definition of the marriage, and then what's this, you know, and I'm by no means not a counselor or advisor on the relationships by any stretch of the word. I don't right. think anybody is in here. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know I'm not. Like you were mentioning with the I need advice on the thing. <laughs> media stuff. Like, I need counseling on the thing. Like tell me, you know. <laughs> You ain't the only one, brother. <laughs> right. Trust me. I just, uh, just like with social media, some people are too addicted and too drawn to inconsistent attention from all mm-hmm. to give it up for consistent attention from one. <laughs> so Yeah, and and it's really interesting with like singers. Well, not necessarily <laughs> singers, but for anyone who craves validation from stage yes. and people applauding. So it almost like the love you give them will never match what they are looking to get. Mm-hmm. It doesn't ha- at first I thought, oh, it's all musicians. No, there are musicians that are not even interested on in being on stage. They just like scoring. They like uh, arranging music. They like performing on records and going to studio. But it's like someone who like craves this this like deep admiration by a large number of people that almost overrides their love for music and it just the music becomes a vehicle to attain that. And then the relationships never worked with a person like that. True. Yeah. True, man. Mm, 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 mm. It's obsession though, because once you get that first fix, you know, it's like a drug, mm-hmm. you know, it starts flowing and you're just like, I want that again. And mm-hmm. you know it becomes a session for people in their lives. I or agree just with they, you. they had like messed up childhoods. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like messed up childhoods and just like no roses and top of no roses. They need like you know like two years of therapy, like an ayahuasca retreat or something. And like Doctor like, Phil. Yeah, they need, they need like they, the the whole thing. Like does that work in ayahuasca? <laughs> I think we said that on yeah. like, the show more than anything else. Ayahuasca with Doctor <laughs> Phil. Oh. <laughs> That's a double whammy right there. I'm just glad Lance can say it right now. Because <laughs> hey, I couldn't. I was like, oh, what, yeah, what, yeah, every time it was <laughs> funny. That's, that's funny. funny that you said that. All right, let's bring it back, though. I just had to throw that out. No, that was a great Let's Phil strike again. <laughs> Loved it. Love Phil. Okay, let's torch him at this point with it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the positive period of the podcast. Davidas, please bless them with some positivity at home. Uh, po- positivity. Yeah. Um. So, Okay. Uh, what, what, what was I thinking? Was, I was meditating about something because I needed positivity myself. Oh, so uh, there's this old movie. I've seen it once, and uh, it has Russell Crowe in it, but I don't remember what's about, what's happening. But there was like a quote etched in the stone, and then he repeated it to somebody. Gladiator? It was, uh, uh, it said, rise and rise again until lambs become lions. You know, and it's just like I've had moments where I could, I didn't want to get out of bed. I, and it's like 
right? You know, you show a picture, you know, me holding that gold plaque. Oh, here's a guy who has everything going for him, right? But the subjectivity of the human experience, you know, you can like, well, he has this and he has that and that. It's like that's but subjectivity of my worldview, like from my eyeballs, my world was shattering, you know, because I invested all of this idea into this one particular person that could take it or leave it. And then, you know, once that went away, it's like, well, how do you how do you deal even if you don't have access to the last conversation of a goodbye for a closure, because they didn't care, you know, so how do you push yourself forward, you know? So it's like rise and rise again until lambs become lions. And mm. just, I just had to like repeat it, you know, because mm. like no one's coming. No one's, nope. no one's coming. Like uh, grown ass man, who's going to come save a grown ass man <laughs> who Dude. from outside has yeah. everything going <laughs> for him? <laughs> You know, Next. yeah, like no, no one. So it's like you have to like, you know, save yourself and be the hero. You know, that's why like comic books and superheroes and superhero movies maybe are so popular because it resonates with this hero idea. You know, that you look at the um, the stories and the origin or how people imagine the creation of the world and the ethos of the story of one man leaving, venturing out into the world discovering something slaying the beast and sacrificing himself and then for on the behalf of like everyone it's like sort of like the archetype of a human being that you have to be that's uh beneficial to you and to everyone else you know it's and you can see that story repeated you know for throughout eons and millennia you know from one civilization to another civilization it's it comes from when we lived in caves with 50 people and right. uh well it's bad weather outside and monsters inside and you know the the, the saber-toothed tigers and well who's gonna go out and get food you know there's no yeah. there's no ralph's there's no <laughs> there's no avocado toast cafes right so there's no bells there's no bells <laughs> what do you do then right it's not burnt <laughs> I know, right? I love this. So man. you have to be that type of like character yeah. and, and embody those qualities of the person to not necessarily leave the cave and fight the beasts, but get out of bed and take a hot shower. And maybe for that day, that's going to be you leaving the cave and you defeating that beast. You know, and shaving, yeah, and and then and then like cutting your nails, and then you know going outside into the world and like pushing because no one's gonna do it for you. Yeah, you you're know? exactly right, brother. Yeah, man, I got something perfect. That's Robin Hood, by the way. <laughs> Robin, Hood, Robin, Robin Hood. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. I got something you perfect know for that. that up. Um, yeah, of I thought, it was, I, thought it was, I just thought he had a top of his head. That's what All right, so does. rock when it lands. You know, it's not. It's not obviously. You know, I didn't come up with this, but. Everybody at home, everybody in the studio, take a deep breath, right? In through your nose, out through your mouth. <sighs> right? We got to do that today. A lot of people don't, right? So you got to realize and, and, and you got to think about what you're going to do with that time, right? So I just want to say that's my motivation every day, right? That I got to be. breathe this morning. So that was awesome what you said, man. And I thought mm -hmm. that would fit in well with it's what I was right. Yeah, it's right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where are you guys at? You want to go? Throw my pee go, man. Oh, you know, man. this is your moment. This is your time. This is what <laughs> this is all about. Throw this one out. Me, me, me. See what you got. All right, all right, all right. Consistency. Let's go ahead, ladies and gentlemen, and stop trying to fill other people's cups with half-filled cups ourselves. Mm. Let's really, really dive deep into us before we try to dive deep into others. You know, we got to really, really sit down and love ourselves in order to allow others to love us. If we don't, they won't, and they won't do it right. And it will, it will stop us from a lot of harming, self-harm and self-hate. Gotcha. So the main thing I definitely want, you know, want people out there to take away from that is really get back to loving yourselves before you try to think about loving somebody else. Word. Bring us home, Joe. So everyone in this room except Davi, because no disrespect, we're not that close. I'm close to all these guys in here. You guys know I've been going through a lot of shit, and I talked to you about everything. And, you know, being a strong person doesn't mean that I don't have demons and feelings and shit going on. And I'm going to tell you what happened. I had to go back to the roots. And when you go back to the roots, you really find out what you're about. Going back home for me for four days and seeing people I grew up with and everything else and made me realize, like, Man, 
I am somebody. Like I, I, I do come from a, I, I do come from a town that's rough and tough. But the thing is, when I go back there, everyone shows love and respect. And when you have that kind of backing, it brings you back up and realize what you're trying to do. And without that support, and I'm not saying I don't have that people out here in L.A., but that is just a it's different. I've known him 30 years. We've gone through things. We've gone to relationship, family, everything. I've been mm-hmm. through everything with these my, my peeps back there. Yeah. And coming, that drive to Salinas, windows down, Howie in the back, chilling, blasting music. My head's just flowing about everything going on. But coming home, it's like talking about breathing. Yeah, now I'm really breathing. Now, yeah. you know, you take a you take a step back and you start breathing and you start realizing what, what you're supposed to be doing in life. And sometimes, you know, I had a person, you know, told me one time, and it's a football reference, sometimes you got to re-kick. Yeah, man. And when you re-kick, let's do it. Let's do it. So that's where I'm at right now. So. Yeah, man. Nice. What are we doing, Mark? Uh, Look, it's that time, that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so... Ladies and gentlemen, compadres at home and wherever you're watching and listening to this at, we just have to say thank you, Davidas, for coming through and giving us a treat, you know, with your presence. But could you please, please bless our hearts and our ears and the viewers at home with a little presence? Of your course. Fingers, brother. Yeah, yeah, I'm waiting. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now watching your neighbors a master yeah, I hope at your neighbors work. I'm going to get mad at this. <laughs> and now, it's yeah. not, it's, this is acoustic. He's going to just. Yeah. Oh, so we're lucky to have him on. Yeah. Yes, this is please, guys, check him. Guys. Listen to, hey, go follow Davi Das. He's gonna be on tour soon. Go to the city near you. Follow his page. We'll link everything. Tag everything. Yes, yes. Can't yes. wait to hear this, man. Amazing. So I've, I've been writing a bunch, you know. So, like, you get like overwhelmed with emotion, and then you have to like almost put it, put it in the snow globe glass bubble, you know, because if you keep it inside, it just eats you on the inside. So mm-hmm. you have to kind of like let it out. Mm-hmm. So let me see if I remember all the words, because I wrote it, but it's like a lot of words, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Trust me, I know. <laughs> I know. It's, yeah. it's a lot of words. It's a lot of words. It's a lot of words. A lot of words. <laughs> a lot of things. Yeah, so uh, it's called an addict, right? So I try to, like, um, uh, every word is true, but, you know, person who doesn't know me, they might assume, oh, it's about a drug addiction. No, it's about a relationship addiction, you know, that's, like, not good for you, you know? So, like... Mm-hmm. I've used like uh, references to, uh, you know, to substance abuse, but it has nothing to do with substance, you know. So, um, and I kind of like took the idea of like Led Zeppelin, kind of like uh, I don't know, you'll hear it. I don't, I'm like I'm like talking about a song, <laughs> man. You know? It's so fire! Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, just play that, man. yeah, right. They heard, oh, they yeah, got and it. Another thing, <laughs> it's the second time I've ever playing the song in front of anyone. Oh, wow. anyone. I played Thank it. you, man. So Thank I played you. it first time uh, at my show last Saturday, and it was like, okay, I forgot half the words. And then, because I only like recorded it once, and then I just released it immediately. Because that's another thing I had to do. Like, I want to like write it out, get it out, and just, just release it. Just like listen to it. That's it. Then I, I got to do the next one. You know. So I like the cover too. It's so <laughs> okay. the, the the photo, the image. Oh so yeah, great. yeah. The shirt off. <laughs> this is gonna be a problem. Hold on. Gotcha, man. That, that's better. My supplier, I bend like spoon. Your lips are fire. You're licking my veins, can't get any higher. Choke me on top, only you I admire. I promise to quit, but I go through withdrawals each time more intense. I shake while I'm crawling. My king size covers holds trace of your essence. I cannot recover, and I pray for your presence. Call it all angels. Take me away, falling in danger Every day, talking to your God On the dimension, tearing it apart And seeking redemption in your 
land of wonders without having malice I make mistakes and blunders I have blurry vision my ears are still ringing my every decision is craving your stinging with labor of monsters I'm on first name basis most sacred honor we place where your face is as I lay in a coma doesn't seem I'll return I'll just wait till it's over as I relish your burn call it all in Talking to your God of that dimension, I'm tearing it apart. Seeking redemption, bring me a nurse, a new medication, find me a cure from blind dedication. Your name is a code for something illegal. If I overdose, it will be lethal. Call it all angels. Take me away, falling in danger Every day I'm talking to your God Of the dimension I'm tearing it apart Seeking redemption Wow! I mean, uh, wow! I can't wait to thank you. That, that wow. That thank I you. I need that song now. Thank Hearing you. Hearing that live. Thank you. Oh my god. Wow. And and, like, and, 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 and mind you, trembling. this is this is this is not even his guitar. <laughs> he tuned it he on the spot. Yeah. Right on the spot. Right on the is spot. That yours? The voice control. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I mean, that was amazing, uh, bro. Unbelievable. Thank you, Unbelievable. Thank you. Seriously, man. Yeah. Thank, you, thank you for blessing with, us, with that. That Dude, was the, amazing. The power and the passion. I did forget one bar. I it think. doesn't matter. It, it, it don't matter. No, he, it, it matters to him. Well, Let's it really does, but. Yeah. But yeah, you can see like, uh, you know, like. Um, uh, uh, how, how did it say? Um, I am the addict and you're my supplier. I bend like spoon, your lips, you know, like heroin, and, but it's like, it's not, mm. you know, or you're licking my veins, veins can't get any higher. And it's like literal licking of veins, you know, and it choked me on top. Boomers <laughs> lost it Ooh. when they, <laughs> when they <laughs> saw the lines. I'm like, Dobby, what are you into? It's like, that's what I'm into, okay? <laughs> the meta, the, the, the double entendres, triple entendres, the metaphor, uh, bro. Oh, did you hear I, Bowie? I did. Mm -hmm. With labyrinth monsters, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. labyrinth reference. You yeah. did a little bit of like a, 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 a like a, a theater type of, uh, you know, like. Theater, yeah. you're right, yeah. you, you picked it up. And actors yeah. drop, yeah. Actors yeah. drop lines all the time and no one knows, awesome, so just man. think about that. Mm -hmm. That's you're an right. awesome yeah. record, man. Thank that's you. Awesome. It really Beautiful. is, it's gonna cool. definitely Beautiful. do what well numbers, man. Thank you so much for blessing yeah, us. Thank with you, that. man. That was thank amazing. you, gentlemen. Yeah. You didn't just yeah. bless us. You bless the compadres that are watching. Everybody listening, watching. Man. Yeah, man. I hope you guys enjoy watching this master at work. For sure. And compadres, you know what to do at this point in the episode. Follow at C O M P O D R E S. And to my right, Ilson himself. I am underscore Ilson. Also to my right, Joe Rosati himself. Yep. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Every time The amazing amazing Davidas again Thank you. And I'm your host SB Press and compadres like that We're going